the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My name is Pastor Jasmine Smart, and it is such a gift to be worshiping with you this second Sunday of Advent here at Fort Street Presbyterian. It is a joy to be back with you after having served you this summer while your pastors are on parental leave during this time. The Holy Spirit brings us together even across time and space. And so together as one church, we worship God today. Please join me in the call to worship. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make God's way clear. Lift every valley, lower every mountain, for the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Let us worship. We come now to a time of confession, a time where we reveal our hearts to God and to one another. We confess our sins in this prayer of confession. Faithful God, we confess that we have not led lives of holiness. We suffer from impatience, apathy, and greed. We have not been at peace. We repent of these offenses and turn to you in love. Forgive our iniquity and pardon our sins, that we may walk in righteousness to the glory of your name. Amen. Hear now these words of assurance. In Jesus Christ, everything has been made new. We are each made a new creation. The old has gone, a new life has begun. 
Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. At this time, we come to the lighting of our Advent wreath. Each week, we prepare our hearts for the Christ candle, the light that is coming into the world. And today, we light the second candle, the candle of peace. Our Old Testament reading comes from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 11. Hear the word of the Lord. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, make, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. God will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
as we come now to our gospel reading, indulge me for a moment in a thought exercise. Imagine a guy named John. John is the only son of a business owner named Zach, of a business that has been passed down from generation to generation. Zach has a beautiful wife named Liz, who was supportive in all he did. And as they raised their son, John, they, of course, hoped that he had, would train in the family business and that he would one day take over. But as John grew up, they worried for him because, to be honest, he was just a little bit odd. He wasn't fitting into their prescribed boxes that they wanted him to fit in if he was going to be a successful small business owner like his dad was. They tried to send him to college, but he didn't do well in any of the business classes he was in. Instead, he just sat around with all the philosophical majors and had these deep conversations. He even picked up some weird habits during that time. Liz and Zach definitely didn't teach him those. Things like eating, grasshoppers. He slept outside in a hammock tied between two trees instead of his perfectly good bed. And not to mention, he came home at Christmas break telling his parents they should invest in a composting toilet. A composting toilet? How strange. Zach and Liz were very worried that when Zach got close to retirement age, which was approaching fast, there was no way John would be ready to follow in his father's footsteps. This is a bit of a creative and modernized stretch of the narrative text before us, but I think it helps us think about the character of John the Baptist from our scripture today as an out-of-place, unexpected character. His parents, Elizabeth and Zachariah, were of the normal class. They weren't living in a desert like John would later do. Zachariah wasn't necessarily a CEO of a small business, but instead he was a priest in a very exclusive job allowed to go into the Holy of Holies, the most special place of the temple. And with that status as priest, it was assumed that his descendants would follow in the father's footsteps. And yet, John turned into more of a prophet than a priest, pointing the way to God in an unexpected and unusual way. During the Christmas season, we also think about the story because John's mother, Elizabeth, gave birth in her old age. And this story reminds us of the miracle of new birth compared to the unique miracle of the Virgin Mary and her pregnancy with Jesus. And John and Jesus were cousins, of course, so that's another reason this story is intertwined here in the Advent season. But in today's reading of the Gospel of Mark, which scholars think was the first and oldest gospel written, there is no traditional baby Jesus story that we're used to. Instead, Mark's gospel lacks any sentimentality. It's quick and to the point and urgent in its message. We arrive with full-fledged John and fully in his ministry, Jesus, just a few verses later. There's no genealogy or infant narrative. Instead, we see at scene one, John the Baptist in the wilderness. John the Baptist was important enough that all four gospel writers include him. Even when they don't include magi or shepherds, they include John the Baptist. So what is so important about his message? Well, let us listen together for the word from Mark 1 to hear God's word for us today and the prophecy John has that applies to our life and our time. Mark 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the ways of the Lord and make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from all the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. 
Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized with you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, illumine the scripture in our hearts and minds. Prepare us for the coming of your word. Give us peace and comfort in this time as we wait and listen. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. John the Baptist is certainly a figure we can all relate to this Advent. For many years, we are inundated with Christmas joy and excitement, but this year, there's a different feeling around us. John the Baptist's wilderness life seems all too real. Like John, perhaps we feel isolated, deserted, like we're living in a desert wasteland with no joy or hope. In a few weeks, when Christmas arrives, we will hear the story of baby Jesus, the way his arrival was announced by the angels proclaiming that there would be peace on earth and goodwill to all people. But today, that hope can be hard to come by. John the Baptist's appearance is meant to prepare us, to point us toward that hope, even as we are in the midst of a barren wilderness. The season of Advent is about an inbreaking of God's Spirit into our messy world. And sometimes that inbreaking brings with it fear, confusion, and most of all, a subversion of our expectations and beliefs. John the Baptist may not have been what people were expecting. Like most prophets, he spoke in metaphors and mystery. And it would have been easy to write him off, to not think he was important, to not listen to him. And yet, people from all over the countryside and all over the important city of Jerusalem heard his message and came to him in the wilderness. Like the prophets of old, which the people of Israel had not had for about 400 years, John lived out these prophecies in his own life. Not only did he speak the prophecies, but he lived them. John modeled for the people a life of penance and restraint, a life where he gave up the comforts of ordinary life to serve as a witness, as someone who would point to something bigger than himself, a sign of what was to come. He did the unexpected, going out into the desert and giving up his priesthood in the temple, going to the place of God's wilderness to be God's spokesman, acknowledging that the good news that is so necessary and needed may need to break in even to the most barren corner of God's creation. The wilderness is a place where it is all the more urgent for a savior to arrive, a place where nothing can live. That is where God's life is needed. And yet God is there in the wilderness, bringing life out of death, even if that life is fragile and hard to see. And so perhaps times in the wilderness encourage us, like John, to put aside time of quiet and prayer and preparation, listening to the word of God in our lives so we can share that word with others. But even when we ourselves cannot hear that word, God does not send us to travel the wilderness alone. Just as people from all over came to John and created a community in that barren land, so we have a community, even across our time and our distance, even when we feel alone in our own homes. Despite our isolation, we are part of a church community, and together we proclaim the good news that is coming this Christmas season and every day. Ultimately, John's preparations pay off, 
and the person he's waiting for arrives. He announces in the wilderness someone more important is coming, and that person comes right after the passage we heard today. Jesus goes to the wilderness, and he decides he's going to be baptized by John, even though John could have been baptized by Jesus as the more important one. But as Jesus humbles himself and is baptized, the heavens open up, and God breaks in to our world. This is Mark's version of the incarnation, of the inbreaking of God's spirit and presence in the world. We don't have an infant narrative. We have this heavenly scene of water and repentance and forgiveness. And right after Jesus' baptism, he too goes and spends 40 days in the wilderness, in the desert, being tested by the devil. Mark knows how powerful these powers of wilderness and despair are. And so with both characters of John and Jesus, he does not try to downplay the realities of the wilderness around them. Instead, he shows God's presence arrive directly in those most barren places. Through John the Baptist and Jesus, we see figures who survive the wilderness because of their hope in the good news of God's coming kingdom. But ultimately, John's story does not end happily, and it foreshadows Jesus' own untimely demise. In Mark's gospel, John the Baptist is imprisoned, but we know from the other stories that he eventually will become executed because his little group of followers was seen as a threat to the powers that be, the Herods of the Roman Empire. And so if John had lived his comfortable, ordinary life, he probably would not have been seen as a threat. He could have lived a long, happy life, had children of his own, and continued the family legacy of being priests in the temple. But instead, he chose to make sacrifices, to go into the wilderness purposefully, based on the promise of a Savior who had been chosen to change the world. Jesus Christ, the anointed Messiah, the coming king, prophet, and priest. John, the baptizer, chose to be a true martyr, truly, because the word martyr, in fact, means witness in Greek, someone who points to something greater than himself. So we, too, are called to take John as our inspiration, whether we choose to go into wilderness or find ourselves there instead. John's thought of giving up and sacrificing because of the way of the Lord, the things that were more important than his own comfort. These things speak to us today as well. Hold on to your belief in Jesus and his saving grace, that even when you go through these valleys and wilderness and barren places that can be much harder than what the self-help guides tell you, that if you just think positive thoughts, you'll be okay. Things are not always okay. But we have hope in a Savior who is greater than this world. In this life and the next, we know that Jesus is King. So let John's witness be a comfort to you and a challenge, that God's presence is with you in the wilderness and find ways to find those places of honey, those sweet moments, even in the wilderness, eating honey. And know that God's inbreaking spirit, just as it comes down in Jesus' baptism, just as the skies open up and God's presence is revealed, that presence is around us always, even when we can't see it or feel it. The spirit is just beyond the horizons of this world. So be like John announce peace and hope for all people, and the good news is coming. Thanks be to God. Amen.
We come now to a time of prayer, praying for God's people all around the world. So please join me with your hearts and spirit in prayer. God, when the time was ripe and the hour had come, you sent your servant John into the wilderness to proclaim the coming of the one true Messiah. Make way, repent, and be baptized, for the salvation of God is at hand. John came to bear witness to the true light, the Messiah, the Son of God, and he told them, Wake up, watch, and wait, for the hour is near when the Son of God will arise. God, on the second Sunday of Advent, we have heard your servant crying out to us in the wilderness. We have heard the call to repentance and restoration, and we want to respond. We have heard that you are offering forgiveness of sins, and we want to hear your mercy spoken over us. We have heard that you are baptizing with water, and with the Holy Spirit, and with fire. Cleanse us and make us new. We have heard that you are ushering in a reign of peace, and we want to see your kingdom when it comes. God, our sins are many, but your mercy is great. Our vision is dim, but your coming is at hand. Our hope is feeble, but your promises stand forever. God, your world stands in need of you. Everywhere we look, we see need of you for your coming, your restoration, your peace, your transformation. On this second Sunday of Advent, we pray for the nations to know your truth and your light. We pray for the poor, the hungry, and the needy. We pray for those who are spiritually hungry and poor in spirit. May they come to know the living water and to drink deeply from your well. We pray for those who may be facing Christmas alone or sick or homeless or destitute. Jesus Christ, light from true light, be a light in the darkness of our lives. God, the hour of your coming again draws near. Make us ready in your hearts and our minds and our souls. And Lord Jesus Christ, come to us again this Advent. Come and do not tarry. We ask you to come and model for us the way we should live, including the ways we should pray in one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hi, my name is Amy Marie Murphy, and I am the operations assistant here at Fort Street. I've got a few announcements here. The first is that we are still running open door, and we are looking for volunteers to help on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday in the morning afternoon time. So if you're interested in doing that or hearing more, just email Trish or look into your newsletter for more information. We're also still looking for tech volunteers. Um, those are the people that help me out. So it might be as simple as hosting the Facebook live stream from your home, or maybe you'll come in and do the soundboard with me, or maybe we eventually get you working on the cameras and setting up everything for the actual live stream. Wherever your experience level is, we'd love to join you, have you join us and train you on how to work and volunteer in this way. Secondly, we recognize that celebrating Advent and celebrating this holiday season is a little bit difficult from home. So we have a couple ways that we're inviting families to do so. The first is an Advent devotional that you should have seen in your newsletter that'll talk you through how to light the Advent can candle from your home and how to celebrate that way. And the other way is to record a video of you and your family um, doing something that is traditional or memorable for you in the holiday season. So maybe that is baking Christmas cookies or decorating the Christmas tree. Maybe you like to sing a certain carol with your family or have some other tradition. If you are interested in being showcased on our social media with that as a way that we can come together and celebrate from afar, then please take a video of you and your family doing so and email it to me at admin at fortstreet.org. Today, we would like to congratulate Pastor Sarah and Garrett on the birth of baby Naima. She was born Wednesday on the 2nd at 4.30 p.m., 7 pounds, exactly 21 inches. And I hope you see in your email the, the announcement of this amazing birth. We are so happy for our pastors here. We also would like to remind you it is stewardship season, so stewardship pledges are due today. If you have already are about to put them in the mail, please go ahead and keep sending them, but they are due today, and your stewardship team thanks you for preparing for 2021 with your pledges. And finally, coffee hour. Please join us after the service today. Past, I will be there. I'm happy to see some of you again since we can't be in person, unfortunately. Love to see you and be able to share with one another some of the Christmas joy and peace in your lives. So now prepare yourself for the blessing of God. Know that you are loved, and whether you are in the barren wilderness or on the peaks of mountains, God is with you. God's presence surrounds you and lifts you up and gives you hope and joy. Let John be a witness for you that Jesus is coming. And when you are called to be that witness to the world, announce with confidence, prepare the way of the Lord in our own lives and in the lives of our friends and neighbors. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.